bristle brush is it has uh, a little bit more strength in, in pushing the paint into this type of surface, which is very porous. It has a lot of the holes in it, you know, as you say, from the texture. Good coverage, this particular paint I'm using is the Utrich. And uh, I'm actually using a, a level of some good paint and some not so good paint. that are the, the step below student grant. So they're a little cheaper. They're cheaper because they have more filler in them and the, uh, the pigment is, is not as as rich. They're not going to crack or anything, right? It's just... Yeah, they're not going to crack. But it's a good question. So what I'm introducing right about here now is I'm putting a little bit more, a touch of white. So I'll go from the darker blue down into you know, this, this lighter blue area. And that's why a brush like this is, uh, you know, it's small enough, easy to handle for this size, but also big enough to put the paint on pretty quickly like this. Now, with those type of dramatic skies, you don't have to worry about the blue going on absolutely perfect because you're going to have little bits of clouds uh, and you want sometimes little specks of, of darker clouds or blue in the background. It, it gives a bit more convincing uh, presence for spatial depth. So as you see here, I'm just mixing right off the palette. I'm not using the palette knife. And if you feel you need to go back up, add a little bit more color, just go back to your formula you have here. I feel like right in here I'm gonna bring in this color. So darker to middle to light here. This is kind of where I'm working. Now, if you paint it quickly like this, you'll get a more seamless blend. Just flick out any cat hairs and stuff like this now. It's a good idea. And when you use this to have a canvas board, you've all experienced it. You get these little white dots everywhere because the paint didn't force its way in. This is why a good bristle brush, you can kind of like, if you need to, dab it in there and then force the blend. Because everything's still wet, you can force it to blend without creating uh, a dry, harsh line. enough paint there that it's not lifting off yet. Always have your paper towels or your your cloth ready, your rag. Now if you're in a hurry, you know, you get maybe a couple of brushes of a certain size that you like ready to go. So you don't always have to clean it up like I just did. A little more white. recommend with this type of painting to stroke side to side rather than vertically or diagonally. I think you'll get a much more uh, convincing uh, overall painted surface that you'll be happy with. Now at this stage, this could easily become clouds on a sunny day if you wanted to. So you always have options when you're painting. You may have something in mind at first, but if an opportunity arises, you know, take advantage of it. So I'll take it to my red right 
here, that's good enough. Let me just soften that up a little bit. set up for now. And I'm going to start with the other one here. The black? No. It's a phthalo blue, Prussian blue, uh, royal blue. Uh, it's a very dark blue. So should it be covering anyways dark clouds? So why do we wouldn't do them straight? Like why we have to do This way, when you do put the dark, the question, some parts of the dark will be very thin, so the blue from behind will come through. It will see through, barely. But it will give you a sense of spatial depth rather than looking so flat. Okay. 